And we also had a really heavy uphill battle to fight, which I do think required some upfront capital, right? We were taking on a fairly heavy problem, right? At that point, if you went to a Nordstrom, you would have not seen a single item with a single performance you know, characteristic. So we were taking yeah. on a pretty big challenge at that point eight years ago. It's become a bit of a new normal now, which is great for us. But at the time we were fighting an uphill battle in fashion where it, it wasn't something that the world really was asking for. We had to explain, here's why this matters. How did you address that fight, that uphill battle? How did you turn around and, and educate the market about this problem? Yeah, I mean, I, there's a couple of answers I'd, I'd give there. One is is word of mouth played a huge role and continues to, right? Is that the best way we can do that is by you telling your friends that that was something that you found this to be useful for. So your voice is more powerful than ours. And the second way that comes to mind is that's why we love retail. Is retail, we don't have to explain it. You put it on that aha moment, I get it, happens before you purchase, right? In e-com, those two events are flipped. You purchase, then have your aha moment. And so for us, it was really special to open stores fairly early on. Our first store opened in 2014. You can imagine we launched the company in 2012. That's pretty quick to get that first store up. And it was really because we just saw so much value in getting that aha moment to be the first experience you had, not your credit card. So for you, that aha moment led the decision to even like, because you see a lot of companies now, they just want to do online sales. But with you, you knew that with customers trying on your clothing, it would be more beneficial to you as a brand and informative to them as a consumer than just purely an online format. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, I, I'd also not um, cover the power of our own preferences as as a founding team where we like shopping in person, right? You know, I think we are in a lot of ways our own customer. And I think one of the interesting things I've seen at, at uh, MIT Sloan's curriculum is this evolution into user-driven innovation, right? Which is acknowledging that it's okay that sometimes as an entrepreneur, you're solving your own problem. And, uh, and I love retail. I love shopping in stores. I love touching and feeling and trying on before I buy. So I think there was probably some mix of an intelligent business strategy that, that saw really great, you know, conversion rates offline. And, uh, and really intimate customer interactions and building kind of true in-depth relationships. And then some part that was just, hey, this would be fun. It would be really great to gather up the people that like our brand, get to hear from them directly, and get to shop in a way that we, we enjoy and, and, and hope continues. Love how simply you put things. So you talk about, you bucket things really nicely, comfort, performance, e-commerce, retail, and both of these things make a lot of sense. And so I can like understand your decision-making process. When you think about retail, so for me now as a real estate developer, I've always, thought that retail at some point will just become nothing more than a marketing exercise for companies unless they own the asset, in which case then you at least have another asset. But in terms of how you view retail post COVID, is it like it's a marketing exercise for you? Is it bringing that aha moment to that specific buyer? And then you have your aha moment on the e-commerce where you have to fulfill both roles or how, what's your thought process around that? Yeah, I mean, there, there are certainly nuances between the channel that the channels that are not, you know, you can't ignore, right? So, I mean, obviously that the order of events happening, right? You pay before you shop or you shop before you pay. That goes without saying, but I, I, beyond that, I, I do think the channels actually have a lot more similarities than they did, than they have differences. Where we still think of both. I mean, we won't continue to have a store unless it's four wall profitable. I mean, we're, 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 okay. we're big believers that anything outside of that, unless it is mathematically provable is, is just a guess and probably a risky one that it's affecting your online business in some massively profitable way, right? Um, we do find that customers are often really tied to a channel. They're either offline shoppers or online shoppers. And they tend to stay with that initial channel where they purchased. They can complement each other from a messaging or impression standpoint, but when you actually swipe, it tends to be in the same place that, that you prefer. And so we still think of stores as a great way to have commerce and a great place to have, you know, an actual contribution margin coming from. And that leads to these higher AOVs, longer customer relationships, higher lifetime values deeper insights, conversations from our GMs uh, with our design team that are just incredibly informative on what people prefer and what their sentiments are. There's a ton of, of, of opportunity for retail still to be a really, really great channel. I think maybe now more than ever, the intimacy of perhaps fewer people in stores, just, you know, the upside there is more time with the sales you know, associates. So mm. I, think, I think it's as alive as ever, as soon as we're able to kind of find a new normal and, and let people be in stores again. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, 
Write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.